roguelike games. A type of genre where the gameplay forces you to go back into action time and time again. In each so-called run, you get progressively stronger and the run ends when you die. You lose all your progress and start a new run, trying to make it farther than last time. This data pack achieves exactly that in Minecraft. And without further ado, grab some snacks, stay hydrated and enjoy the video. Alright then, let's create the world and see what this is about. I have only seen one video about this data pack and I was hooked instantly. In my time, I have played a few roguelikes like Hades, Hades 2 or Have a Nice Death. Technically, they are roguelites, which is slightly different from roguelikes, much like this data pack. I'll get to the difference between the two in a second. First, let's read through all these books. <laughs> Okay, that was a lot of text for my short attention span. I'll summarize it for you during my first run. As you can see, there are some advancements to get in this data pack. Some of them are supposedly pretty challenging. And let me tell you, I'll get all of them. Anyways, let's just start our first run. Well, this is an awful spawn. As you can see, I have only five hearts. This makes us very vulnerable right now. So let's craft some armor, right? See, in this data pack you cannot craft any armor or tools. Now there are some exceptions like a shield, a fishing rod or a turtle helmet. But the main armor types, tools like pickaxes and axes and weapons cannot be crafted. However, there are ways to get these types of items. Either we find them as loot in chests or we buy some permanent upgrades. That way we can spawn in with better gear. But I'll show you what that is about after this run. By now you might have noticed a new item in my hotbar. This is called a skill gem. We can acquire them by leveling up. The skill gems can be used in three different recipes. Using various items we can either craft them into one, two or four skill points. Skill points is the currency used to buy permanent upgrades like more hearts, better gear and a whole bunch more. And no, you cannot exploit this by spending your XP on an anvil and leveling up again through the low levels. You get a skill gem for each level up only once per run. There are two other ways to get skill points. Every time you complete a vanilla advancement, you gain one skill point. So the focus of each run is to complete a bunch of advancements and gather resources to craft skill gems into skill points. The other option is to find skill points as loot in chests. Lastly, there is also a difficulty bar at the top of the screen. This increases over time. For the first 10 difficulty levels, mobs get stronger by gaining armor, a larger explosion radius, or even totems of undying. So the more time you spend on a run, the harder it gets. On level 11 and upwards, however, mobs do not get stronger. Instead, the player loses two hearts for this run for each increase in difficulty. This stops at one heart. So if worst comes to worst, I'll be fighting much deadlier mobs having armor and totems with only a single heart. But dying is for losers. I'll complete this data pack within a single run. Let's just forget what I said. Well, since I am back here, let's go through all the rooms in the Cosmic Dome. This is the Infinite Garden. I'll get to that one later. Here are some mysterious obelisks. Only two of them are activated. Each of them stands for a boss. Yes, there are bosses in this. Currently, there are only two bosses, but from what I can see, they plan on adding a whole bunch more in the future. Next, there are classes. I don't know anything about these either, but you can see how many skill points each of them cost. Then, here are the upgrades. These range from enchantments and potion effects over mana regeneration to items like food, blocks, and and better tools and weapons. By now you might also have noticed some of the shops have locks above them. Bronze locks allow you to buy most of the upgrades as you can buy certain upgrades multiple times. Silver allows you to buy some of them while gold locks block you completely. The only way to get rid of these locks is by defeating bosses. Here I can customize the loadout. This puts the items in a certain slot automatically whenever I start a new run. Lastly there are abilities. We can bite them to the items in my hotbar. Since I don't know what any of them do we'll have to figure out together which ones are the best. Earlier I mentioned there is a difference between rogue likes and roguelites. The difference between the two is that you cannot buy permanent upgrades between runs in roguelikes. The only way to get stronger is to play the game and gather experience about how the game works and improve your gaming skills. This however isn't the case for a roguelite like this data pack. Anyways, let's stop yapping and start another run. This is where I made a mistake. While I wasn't able to craft any of my skill gems into skill points in my first run, I had still completed some advancements. This meant I had skill points left to spend. However, any unspent skill points are lost when you start a new run. Well, I didn't have that many, so I guess it's fine. Anyways, this run went way better than the first one. This is a much better spawn already. Well then, let's just grab some coal and copper so I can craft some skill points once I have skill gems. Well, this is a precarious situation. Come on, give me this copper. I wouldn't drown here, would I? Yeah, not even close. Finally, some food. Here's the first crafted skill point. Let's keep smelting and craft more skill points. It's getting a little dark, so let's find a bed.
sweet dreams. As mentioned, advancements give me skill points too. I was looking through the village to get some advancements, but I soon returned to smelting and making a shield, one of the few exceptions of tools I can craft. Let's replant the seed. This guy seems to want to give me some free iron. Let's make a bucket. And give me this bread. And would you look at that? Surely this donkey wants to be my friend. Alright buddy. There's a bunch of coal and copper. A few moments later. Here we go, a bunch more skill points. Well then, let's enter the nether and leave again. I just wanted the advancement. Eventually turned night time where I decided to fight some mobs and well, I died. At least I have 20 skill points now. This should get me plenty of upgrades. Let's get fortune on the pickaxe. As you can see, I can't buy any more upgrades until I defeat some bosses. Then I bought the two abilities, fireball and drill. I bound them to the red square and blue circle items. Then I got some more max health and spent my remaining skill point on food. After spawning in the middle of the ocean, I swam to the shore and used my fortune pickaxe to get some coal. Then I tested out the abilities. The drill makes it really easy to get a ton of blocks and the fireball was a little underwhelming. It costs quite a lot of mana and doesn't deal too much damage. It takes 4 fireballs to kill a creeper. Anyways, I crafted some skill points and moved on. I found a skill point on a shipwreck. I followed the map to the buried treasure where I was rudely interrupted. Here I then finally found a weapon. After fighting some mobs, I bred some turtles for a skill point. I gathered some food and then this guy decided to activate his kill aura. <laughs> Anyways, here's my redemption for the first run. I then found this rune portal underwater which was completable. I decided to go to the nether for real this time. Given the fact I for some reason cannot hear ghasts, this was probably a stupid idea. Anyways, here goes nothing. Here's another advancement. I mined some quartz for levels and gold ore for, well, gold. This allows me to craft a single skill gem into two skill points. Then I decided to fight zombified piglins for some levels. That was less profitable than I thought, so I mined some more quartz. Definitely not because I got scared of this guy. I then spotted a soul sand valley. I wanted to still go there as I could get the return to sender advancement. Yeah, straight to the gas that I still cannot hear. Well, at this point I had 38 skill points to spend and progress was getting slow. I couldn't find a fortress either where one of the bosses would be. So I built over to the gas and it was already over. Guess it's time to get some juicy upgrades. I got both tools and sword maxed, as well as armor, at least as much as I can at this point. As I disabled Fulbright for this series, since there is an upgrade called Night Vision, I decided to spend my last few points on that. Now I hope you can see a lot better. Well then, let's finally check out the Infinite Garden. Here you can always see your base loadout. Now I have diamond tools, a weapon from the get-go, and full chainmail armor. Over there you can see some light beams. If I were to go over there, it would spawn in the items from my runs. This means I can farm resources during my run, retrieve them at these beams, and build something here. I will probably make a house of sorts here eventually, but nothing too fancy. I'll leave the massive build projects to the Harker series. This time I have a sword from the beginning as well as armor and better tools overall. Let's get started. Here's a lava pool, but I have no bucket yet so I can't go to the nether. Over there's a village. You thinking what I'm thinking? Let's do a raid. Should I do a raid? I guess I could. Well, first let's check out the village. Blacksmith, let's go. Here's some free iron. Here's a shield. Well then, let's head over there to get an ominous bottle. Having no bow might give me a run for my money. Before starting the raid, I looted the shipwreck for a skill point and a diamond. I followed the map to some more goodies and almost drowned. I trapped the villagers so that it is impossible to lose the raid unless I die. But that would never happen. After slurping the bottle, I was a bit confused with this new raid omen thingy. Turns out there's quite some time until the raid actually starts. Anyways, here we go. I 
tried to jump off and water clutch, but I was a tad bit too slow. Uh, I only got seven skill points this run. That was horrible. What am I even going to spend this on? I guess more max health and some defense would help. Not sure what defense actually does. It's not protection. That is a different upgrade. I guess we'll see what that is next episode. Anyways, next time I might get into the different classes and hopefully get to fight one of the bosses. I'll definitely continue to play through the entire data pack. If you want to play this for yourself, I'll leave the link in the description. Well, I hope you enjoyed this first episode as much as I did. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next episode.